Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we just go before God's presence at this time and just worship the ancient of days, the I am that I am, the Holy One of Israel, the everlasting Father. Let's exalt his name. He's the God of all times. Let's bless his name and just appreciate him. We are in his presence this morning. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And God's presence is everywhere, if you must know. Wherever it is that you are, God's presence is there with you. Why not let him know that you are in his presence this morning? I am in your presence. I'm singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we are in your presence, we're singing hallelujah, hallelujah, we're singing hallelujah, let's just tell our Father we are in his presence, wherever it is that you are at this moment, just tell him how wonderful he is to you, he's the protector of your soul, he guides and he keeps you, wherever it is that you are, just celebrate his faithfulness, let him know that indeed you are grateful for the opportunity to be alive, thank him for his grace, thank him for his mercy, thank him for his love and kindness, thank you for all that he's doing, that which you don't even know. He preserves your soul from evil. He keeps you from danger. Celebrate him and just bless his name. The psalmist says, Oh my soul, bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. And the psalmist begin to reel out all that God has done. The one that keeps your soul from destruction. The one that delivers you from the hands of the enemy. The one that frustrates the tokens of the wicked ones. Why not bless him? What is it that he has done for you? He has done so much for me. That songwriter say, I cannot tell it all. Why not bless him this morning? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Thank you, precious Father, this morning. In Jesus' name, we have worship. I just want us to say a word of prayers. God is not limited by distance. God is not limited by space. He reigns from eternity to eternity. He rules from heaven. And the affairs of the whole universe are so manifest in his presence. So I just want us to ask him that this morning, wherever it is that you are, that God will reach out to you. God will speak to you. God will do something in you and for you that will make a tangible difference this morning. Pray and say, Father, I'm in your presence this morning and I've come to be blessed. This morning. I have come to be blessed. I've come to be touched. I've come to receive of you. I ask that you will reach out to me in my little corner. I ask that you will reach out to me in my present location. I ask that you do that which only you can do. You are the one that can reach out from the farthest of distance to wherever it is that I am. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Precious Father, we thank you this morning. We we'll appreciate you because you are indeed the God of all locations, the God of all presence. You are omnipresent, meaning that you are everywhere. Your power reaches from heaven to the farthest location on the planet. And so, Father, we celebrate this greatness of yours this morning. We have gathered in your presence at this time like this. And we are asking, precious Father, that you will reach out to us in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that wherever your people may be present, Tapping into the power of your presence. We ask, Lord, that you will reach out to them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let 
physical distance. Let it not be a barrier to the blessing that you have prepared for us this morning. Amen. Thank you, precious Father. You. For we've prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's, it's wonderful this morning. And I know that many of us are located in different parts of the city. But I'm trusting God that in spite of that, he will, he will still reach out to us and he will speak to us. And he will do that which only him can do. This morning, I just want us to share briefly from God's word. And I want to be taking my test from Ephesians this morning. Ephesians in chapter 5. And I want to share with you a message that I have titled, Profiting from Tough Times. Profiting from Tough Times. We are in an incredible difficult situation in every part of the world. But how can God's people, God's people, how can God's people make the most of it and still enjoy all that heavens? have for them. Ephesians in chapter 5, let me read verses 15, 16, and up through to 17. Scripture says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise people. It says we should be redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Say, wherefore, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. I love the rendition of the New Living Translation. It says, be careful how you live. Say, don't live like fools. Say, but live like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Say, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. This scripture means that even at a time like this, even at a time that is so difficult in every part of the world, there is an expectation of how God's people should still conduct themselves. There's an expectation of how God's people should live. Say so we should live circumspectly in the King James Version. Or we should be careful in how we live. It says we shouldn't live like fools. Meaning that there is a, there's a manner of comportment at this time that will be tantamount to being foolish. And there is a, there is a way you live and operate your life, like someone who is connected to heaven, like someone who understands that times and seasons are for specific purposes. Everything is designed. There is no mistake in God's agenda. So he said we must take opportunity of every situation. So even a time of global pandemic, even a time that everyone is in, in a crisis mode, he said we must take opportunity even in these evil days. In these evil days when the whole world is passing through difficulties. There is no corner of the earth where there isn't a challenge, where there isn't a pressure, where there isn't anxiety, where there isn't fear. The whole world is on lockdown. Countries can move, you know, and visit, people can visit each other just because of the difficulty that, that the world is going through. The scripture calls it perilous time in Paul's writing to, to, to Timothy. It says, in the last days, such time as tough as this will come. Say, in the last days, perilous time shall come. And, and I think difficulties like this and moments like this just remind us how real the scripture really is. I know that for many of us, we still find it difficult to relate with the stories of the Bible, the pandemic that happened in Egypt, for example. There are moments when you will begin to, you know, contemplate whether this was actually real or whether it was just story. But what is happening presently 
is an evidence of the fact that what we saw through the scripture were definitely real. So if you can't believe, or if you found it difficult to believe that there was a time that there was flood during the time of Noah, and there was a time that plague was ravaging the whole of the land of Egypt, what is happening is a very good example for us. So we are witnesses to that which for many years to come, people will wonder whether it was real. People who didn't have the opportunity to see this period, if you recount that experience to them, they will tell you, I, I, I doubt that could have happened in the planet and the world that we live in. But I'm trusting that you and I will leverage the benefits, take advantage of the opportunities, just like the scripture says. The scripture told us of the children of Isaac, in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, 1 Chronicles chapter 12 in verse 32, it says, Of these children, they were men that had understanding of the times, and they know what Israel ought to do. That's the kind of spirit I'm praying that God will give unto you, that you will be like the children of Isaac, who understood what Israel ought to be doing. So this is not the time to allow boredom, this is not the time to crave into and indulge in attitudes and habits and behavior that are contrary to God's teaching, that are contrary to what the Holy Spirit expects of us. So, what must we be doing at such a time like this? We must have an understanding of how, how difficult it is for everyone around the world but how you and I as children of God are supposed to maximize and are supposed to take advantage of, of, of what the Lord is, is, is telling us. So, I will share with you four things that you should be doing at such a time like this. The first thing that you should be doing is that you must use this opportunity to seek the face of the Lord. This is the time to seek God. This is the time to develop even a deeper, closer fellowship and relationship with the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 105, verse number 4, the scriptures say you should seek the Lord and his strength. It says you should seek his face forevermore. New Living Translation says, search for the Lord and for his strength. Seek him continually. This is a time that you must use the opportunity that you have to seek God's face. I know that because we live in, 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 in a world that is so fast moving, many of us have very limited time to spend praying, to spend fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. We wake up in the morning and before you know what is happening, it's like you know, 30 minutes before you should be in your office. So you're rushing to get dressed and then off you go. No time to pray, no time to study the word, no time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But that excuse is no longer there. This is a time where everyone is now required to stay back at home. So what a time to leverage an opportunity to be in God's presence. You can spend ample time and quality time developing bond, developing friendship with the Holy Spirit. This is the time to seek the Lord. This is the time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. This is the time to develop closer affinity with heaven. That's what God expects you and I to be doing at such a time like this. Let your response be like what David said when God called or when God told him in Psalm 27 verse number 8. He said, my heart has heard what you say. Come and talk with me. And my heart responded, Lord, I am coming. David said, I heard you right in my heart. You are calling unto me. You are asking me to come and talk with me. My heart heard, me, heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responded, Lord, I am coming. Let that be your response. Let that be your response at a time like this. God is seeking out for those who will use time with him, those who will spend time with him. There are many things that can, you know, wear off time at such a time like this. Social media indulgences, linking up with people and, and spending endless time 
you know, on social media chatting and talking, that time can be productively used. Engaging with the Holy Spirit, spending quality time in the presence, in the presence of God. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, it says, you will seek me and you will find me. Those who will spend time to seek God at such a time like this, God is saying, you will find me when you search me with the whole of your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 27 verse number 8, seek my face. My heart said, Lord, I will seek you. Let that be your kind of response. God said in Proverbs 8, verse number 17, He said, I love them that love me. I love that scripture so much. He said, I love them that love me. And those that seek me will find me. If you will spend time to seek the face of God, seek the face of God for your situation, seek the face of God for your life. This is the time to let God speak to you. This is the time to forget yourself in the presence of God. Just worshipping, just bonding with heaven, just bonding with your Father. And in that moment, hear Him speak to you. Hear Him tell you what to do. Hear Him give you instruction. Hear Him give you direction. Spend quality time at a time like this to seek the face of God in fellowship. Number two, spend the time to search the scriptures. It's the time to study God's word. It's the time to read the Bible. John Gospel chapter 5 verse 39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Search the scripture. Use it this time as an opportunity to know more about God's word for your life. Know more about God's heart for your life. Know more about God's plan for your life. There is absolutely nothing that is happening in the world today that hasn't been foretold. There is absolutely nothing that you want to achieve in life that isn't written in God's word. God's word is an instruction manual for every child of God. Spend time to study so you can see God's instruction, you can see God's word, so you can understand his heart for you. Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16, he said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. All scripture, they are inspired by God and they are profitable for doctrine. So if you want to know about God's rule, God's law, God's doctrine, search the scripture. He said, it is good for reproof. It is good for correction. It is good for chastisement. Reading God's word, you will come across errors that you've made, mistakes that you've made, and God's word will reprove you, will rebuke you. God's word will chastise you. God's word will correct you. He said it is also for instruction in righteousness. If you are looking for guidance, if you are looking for direction, they are there in God's word. And this is an opportunity for you and I to spend quality time searching the scripture, quality time finishing that Bible plan that you had opened. Many of us have, you know, registered for one year Bible reading plan and we haven't had time to even go a third of it in many years. But this is an opportunity for you and I to spend time searching the scripture. So he said this, God's word is inspired. And it's profitable for doctrine, it's profitable for reproof, it's profitable for correction, it's profitable for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So the Bible is a complete manual that you should spend quality time at such tough times as this to study. Instructions have been written from time immemorial but have relevance an application even in present day. Romans 15 verse 4 says whatsoever were written in those days were written for our learning. They were written for our instruction. They were written for our guidance so that through patience and comfort of the scripture we might have hope. There is something God wants to tell you about the current times that is there already written ahead of time 
time immemorial there in the scripture. So whatsoever we're written, we're written for your learning. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, it says, All that happened to them in the past, they happened for an example, and they are written for our admonition. Those of us upon whom the end of the world are come. There is no doubt that by, by the examples of what we see all around us, we know we are in the last days. And the scripture says, the scripture is written even for our instruction at a time like this. Number three, you should spend this time for self-examination, self-appraisal, evaluate where you are. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 says, examine yourself. This is time for self-reflection. This is a time that you can, you can focus on yourself. Say, examine yourself. This is not about somebody telling you how well you have done or how bad you are doing. This is a time where you can self-reflect. You have your goals for the year. You have your plans for the year. It is the third month of the year. In fact, the third month of the year has barely two days left, and it will all be over. So first quarter of 2020 will be done. What have I achieved? How far have I gone? Examine yourself. Do self-evaluation. Do self-appraisal. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Where am I in God's plan? What am I doing? How far am I doing? How well am I doing? I have goals for the year. What have I achieved out of them? I have plans for the year. What have I achieved? And there is no better person to do that examination than yourself. You know yourself better than anybody. You can, you can meet counselors, you can meet mentors, you can talk to leaders to guide you, to help you. But only you can do a very honest assessment of yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, what, For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of a man himself? That is, there is no man that understands man well enough than himself. So there is no man that knows the things of a man except the man by himself. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God is the one that does. Praise the Lord. So, it's time to self-review your plan. It's time to review your goals. It's, it's time to criticize yourself. Let the Holy Spirit help you. This is not a time to just pat yourself in the back. Self-meditation. What did I agree to do in this year? What did I agree? What did I set out to achieve? And what are the things hindering those achievements? What are those limitations? What are those hindrances? What are those obstacles? Self-examination. Spend time reviewing yourself. Spend time evaluating your progress. Spend time examining how far you have gone. Number four, it's time for self development. It is time to seize the moment, seize the opportunity that these challenges have created to see how can I self-improve? What can I use this period for? Romans chapter 8 verse number 28 says, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love him. Even difficult times, even tough times, everything work together for the good of them that love God. This is time to do something that will develop you. You're spending time with the Holy Spirit. You are searching the scripture. You are evaluating yourself. You are also examining what can I do that when this period is over, I will be glad that I had those time for myself. Can you read books, for example? How many books have you bought that you have piled up and you've not been able to read? Imagine you are able to read books that will change your life. Imagine you are able to read books that will give you ideas and inspiration that you never thought possible. Imagine you will read books that will 
open up your mentality, expose you to different, different ways of thinking, different ways of doing things. Imagine you will read books that will help you deal with certain habits. Imagine you will read books that will help you learn new things about yourself, about your business, about your career, about God, about Holy Spirit. Reading books is one fantastic way of developing yourself. Daniel said, I understood by the books. He read, he opened the book and understood what the mind of God was for God's people. Read books. You can spend that time to develop yourself doing online study. Online courses. There are several applications, there are several tools where today you can do certified programs without leaving the comfort of your home. Spend time for online study. Spend time for online certification courses. Spend time to read new things. Maybe you want to become proficient in your career. There's something you can study about your, about your career. There's something you can study about your business. There's something you can learn about what you're doing. There's something you can learn about parenting. There's something you can learn about marriage. There's something you can learn about different kind of things. You can learn something about health, healthy living. And these resources are available everywhere on the internet. So this is time to self-develop. This is time to learn new skills. Spend that time for yourself, with yourself, learning new skills. You can even write books, you can even write memoirs, you can even write journals. You can write articles. This is the time to do something that at the end of the whole exercise, you'll be, you, you'll, be so, you'll be so glad that you had such an opportunity. You can develop your existing skills. Self-develop. So whether it's spiritual, and whether it's touching your career, whether it's touching material things, there are productive use of the time. Develop yourself at a time like this. Learn new skills. Become proficient at some of your existing skills. Read books. Write books. Research into a topic. Research into a product. How about you meditating and spending time and asking Holy Spirit, what can I, what business can I venture into even at a time like this? What new things can I learn about myself? That's what God's people do. That's how God's people live. That's how they engage with the Holy Spirit to help them understand and make meaning of every situation. You can research into a product. You can find solution to something. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, and there is a time to every purpose under heaven. Nothing in God's calendar is an emergency. Nothing is in God's calendar is unplanned. Everything works according to his divine purpose. So what can I do at a time like this? And that's why spending time with the Holy Spirit who will inspire your mind makes very critical sense. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. As many as are led by God's Spirit, those are the real children of God. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. What must I do to improve myself? So that when this period is over and I am back at my work, when this period is over, I am back in school. When this period is over, I am back at my business. When this period is over and I can move around again, I can move around the world again, what will be one thing that I'm going to be grateful to God for that I achieved during this period? Will you allow the period to just come the way it has come and then you just while away the time and then it fizzles out? Or will there be something that you will be pointing at and you'll be saying, God, I remain grateful that during that critical period, you helped me. I understood you more. I learned this new thing from your word. 
I developed closer relationship with the Holy Spirit. I did away with some habit because I self appraised myself, I examined myself, and I realized that certain things in me will allow me to move forward, and I cut them off. Or will you learn something new? You see, it was during that particular period that I read a particular book, and the Holy Spirit ministered to me, and right from there, this solution happened, this miracle happened. This development happened. What exactly will you point out at the end of this exercise to say, Lord, I'm grateful to you? It wasn't all gloom and doom. It wasn't all fear and anxiety. But I'm grateful to God that during that particular period, I was able to search your face and I found you. I was able to pray longer. I was able to talk to the Holy Spirit. I was able to read the scripture. I was able to examine myself. I was able to develop something new. If you will do that, you will have profited maximally from a time that is as tough as the one the world is currently experiencing. I just want you to bow down your head wherever you are and just talk to God and just say, Lord, let this period not be a wasted period. Let it not be a wasted time. I know it's a tough time for the entire world. The whole world is going through difficulty. But Lord, through it all, Father, let there be something for which I will be grateful. Let there be something for which I will remember this period and be eternally grateful. Help me, Lord, to Seek your face during times like this. Help me, Lord, to pray more. Help me, Lord, to stay closer to the Holy Spirit. Help my friendship with you to get stronger. Help my friendship with you to get really closer. Give me appetite for the world at such a, at such a time like this. Give me appetite to study your word. Give me appetite to research into your word. And Holy Spirit, help me. I open up my life to you. Help me to examine myself and be able to identify where I am in, in your plan for my life. Help me identify things that I must do away with. Help me identify things I must start doing. I open up my life and I open up myself to you. And during this period, Lord, let it be a period of personal building. Let it be a period of personal development. Let it be a period that something specific, something unique will happen in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Developing relationship with God starts even by coming to establish that relationship ab initio with Him. And if you are not born again and you haven't given your life to Christ, you can't be building on nothing. The first point of call, the first action, is that you surrender your life to Him. And so if you are not born again, and you want to surrender your life to him so that he can help you make meaning out of your life. So that he can help you make meaning out of such a difficult period. I will ask you to please put your right hand on your, on your chest and just say this prayer with me wherever you are. And say, Father, I come to you this morning. Your word says, whosoever comes to you, you will not reject. I come to you this morning and I ask that you will receive me. I ask that you have mercy on me. I ask that you will forgive me all my sins. I ask that you will wash away my sins away. I ask that the blood of Jesus will cleanse me from all sins and from all, all unrighteousness. Save me this morning. Let me become one of your sons and one of your daughters. In the name of Jesus. And from this moment, help me to live a life that is meaningful. 
I welcome the Holy Spirit into my life. And beginning from today, I begin to enjoy guidance of the Spirit of Heaven. The Holy Spirit will begin to guide me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for everyone who have taken that critical step of inviting you into their life. Your word says, you stand at the door and that you are knocking. If anyone will open up the door of their heart, you will come into their life and you will eat with them. Father, I ask that as many who have invited you this morning, Father, you will please receive them, save them, and forgive them their sins in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, let the right and the privilege and benefits of sonship, let it become theirs in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit continue to guide them. Let the Holy Spirit continue to lead them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so, Father, I pray this morning for everyone under the influence of my voice, those who have lifted up their voice, those who have lifted up their hearts, praying and asking that you will help them to profit from this tough time that the world is experiencing. I ask that you will answer in the mighty name of Jesus. We want this period to be a time of fellowship, a time that will seek your faith, a time that will develop relationships, a time that we will deepen that relationship with you. As many who are yearning, I ask, Lord, the Holy Spirit, you will fellowship with them, reveal the mind of God to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Many are committing and saying, Lord, this period will be a time that I will study your word. I will devote to studying God's word. I ask in the name of Jesus, as we search the scripture, reveal the heart of God to us, through your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Lord, as we're praying, e examining ourselves, asking the Holy Spirit to do an extra of us, Father, we ask, Lord, that you will open the eyes of our understanding, that whatever it is that we need to cut off, whatever it is that we need to cultivate, the kind of lifestyle that you will need us to develop during a period like this, we will do in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I'm asking that for every one of your children, by the time this period is over, there will be something tangible that we will point at. And we will say, Lord, even during that difficult moment, that was the time God helped me to achieve this. That was the time God helped me to gain this new skill. That was the time God helped me to identify new opportunity. And that was how my life turned for the better. Let that be our testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we just wrap up, I just want us to say a word of prayer for the world. God's word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and they will pray and they will seek my face, it says I will hear from heaven, I will hear and I will heal their land. I want us to just lift up our voice and join with millions and billions of believers all over the world to say a word of prayer for our planet and seek God's face and say, Lord, we desire your intervention. We ask that you will heal our land. We put an end to the scourge of the plague of this pandemic. We chase coronavirus out of our planet. We chase coronavirus out of our country. We chase coronavirus out of our state, out of our abode. We decree and declare God's word concerning us that none of the diseases will come over us. None of the diseases will come over us. None of the diseases. Father, we ask, Lord, that you will heal the land. Father, we ask that there will be a solution in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we pray and we join our faith together with believers all over the world to lift up our planet, to lift up the world, and to lift up our country. Say, so if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, you say you will hear from heaven, and when you hear, you will heal our land. Father, this morning we desire healing for the world. We desire healing for Nigeria. We ask, oh Lord, that you will heal this land and purge it of all the diseases that are plaguing the earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We chase coronavirus 
out of Nigeria in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We declare this land sanctified and freed by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. We purge our land by the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus. We purify this land by the blood of Jesus. Jesus. We sanitize this land by the blood of Jesus. Lord we decree that this land is purged in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And over every one of your children, I decree and I prophesy that your protection will be over them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So when I see the marking of the blood or the doorposts of your houses, it says that evil will pass over you. We ask, Lord, that the houses where each and every one of your children are currently staying is marked by the blood of Jesus and there will be no coronavirus, there will be no infection in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord, you will preserve your children. Lord, you will protect your children in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.